Hi, 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 friends. Welcome to Joy Fido International. My name is Joy Fido, and I've got amazing, amazing news and information and tips and hints for you today. So, welcome on board. Okay, so what's so exciting about today? Um, I'm sure you can see it on my face. I'm really, really excited. Why? Because I've been away, we've been away on a trip to China. And so the topic of today is called China Business Opportunities. China Business Opportunities, March 2019. Now, I'm being very specific about March 2019 because there's so much more that's going to be coming regarding this particular topic. we got so much coming up. And so, um... We want you to just watch this space on China. But knowing the way we operate, knowing the way Joy Fido International operates, our dream is to support your growth. We want to help you grow. Because like I've always said to you, as we grow, we want you to grow with us. And the more you work with us, the more we are growing. So your growth is our growth. When you grow, we grow. So. Based on that, when we have any ideas, any knowledge, any information, anything that can help you grow, we are more than happy to share that with you because we then all grow together. So, China business opportunities, what happened is we went away to China. Um, we've been away for over two weeks and we just came back. And I am buzzing. I am practically buzzing with exciting information to share with you and like i said i don't like keeping it to myself i like to share it out because the more i give the more nature gives me back so this trip was absolutely amazing i mean everybody who knew i travel if you follow me on facebook i i throw out this information where i'm going what i'm doing and then when i come back clearly i'll give you feedback on it and so this is like a feedback on the trip to china and so Everyone's been like, so how was it? How was it? How was it? What happened? And, you know, you cannot keep telling every individual, this is how it happened. This is. So I like to just throw it out and then go and watch the video because then you see all that, you hear all that happened. So there is so much business opportunities in China, my friends. I want you to know that. And this whole thing about luck, you know, like I always say about Joy Fido International, it's about spreading wealth. It's about helping you grow your wealth. It's about you knowing that there's wealth unlimited out there. So everything about scarcity, about poverty, all of these things are artificially created. They're created by man. There's so much out there that all of us can have enough to go around. And this is where I start get, guiding people to, to please understand that this thing called jealousy, envy, and, and, and selfishness are things that don't help us to grow at all because there is no need for that. Okay, so there's so much business opportunities in China. And because I just came back, I want you to start thinking. I want you to open your thinking. I want you to open your mind so you can benefit from all the opportunities that's out there. So especially those of us who are in the UK, in Europe, in the US, you know, the Western world, there's this thing that goes on around us here. In Africa as well, oh yes, Africa, you know me, I like, I like to talk about what's going on in Africa. There's so much going on that people want us to feel so small. They want, they want us to feel like there's something not right with us. But we need to grow out of that. We need to understand that all these things are artificially created by man to affect our mind. You know when I keep going on about this mental development? To affect our mind and what really hurts me in particular is I look around me, especially in Africa. So many of my relatives, all you hear, this one has died, that one has died, that one has died. And it's like, is that the reason God created us? To just be born within a few years and then we die? No, that's not the reason. So. Once we understand that there's so much out there, you're going to find that that excitement in you that makes you want to achieve will naturally pop out. 
I mean, I know so many of my friends who are in jobs they're not happy with, who are taking on skills they don't like, who are going to colleges and taking on courses that is not supporting their growth. And you then slowly start to gradually die. You die inside. And if you die inside, it's difficult to pull you out. But when you allow things to happen around you, when you allow yourself to see reality happen, you know, see things that are happening in the world, you now see yourself slowly come out, slowly come out, and start being yourself again, and start being happy. So this lack and us chasing jobs that are not there, they are not things we need. So this trip to China, for me, is not the first time I've been to China. I've been to China this is like the fourth time I've been to China. But why is this time really exciting me so much? I'll tell you why. Because from what I've just explained about this scarcity being created to us, especially in the Western world in Africa, I have taken on so much. I mean, you know, I offer training and skills in hair and, you know, we deal with hair, hair skills, we deal with hair knowledge, we deal with uh, uh, hair, hair service and all of these things gradually try to drain me it drains my spirit I'm thinking is this all there is to life and I, and I know that this is not all there is to life I know there's so much more out there so what I then did was I took on lots of courses there was a course in speaking I took a course in um, property development I took a course in business enterprise. I took a course in internet business school. So I'm taking on all these courses. And these are not cheap courses, I'm telling you. These are thousands of pounds on each of these courses. And I didn't just take it alone. I took it with my husband just so as to open our knowledge and see what we can, what we can add on to what we know. And I tell you, I would not say they were, practically, I would not say they were a waste of money. But what I found out, which lots of people I met on these courses are struggling with this. As you get on this course, the first stage, you pay the thousands of pounds, you take on the course. Once you finish that first stage, what they then tell you, oh, no, 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 this was just the first stage. After this, you have to pay more money in order to be able to work with them directly. And I'm thinking, I don't even do that in my training. My training, when people pay... No, about half of what I paid on all these workshops, which are like three day, two day, and you pay so much money. My course here, we, we charge about that same kind of money for a 10 day course. And when we offer 10 day course, we offer so much skills. Like the 10 day course here is about 10 different skills. No, 12 day course for 10 different skills. And each of our skills could get you started in business. That's how I operate. I love to see people who have tangible results from me. And so when I pay for these courses that are like two-day course, three-day course, putting so much money into it, then you're told, no, this is just the beginning. You haven't even started. You need to come and pay another 500, 600 pounds every month to work with them for like three years before you can achieve results. And that just broke me. That broke me. Because... That's not what I was expecting. I was hoping if I've taken on this course, I should come out with tangible results and I can do things and I can see results. No, that wasn't our reality. So the good thing about this courses that I've done is it then, it then opened my eyes. It opened my understanding that, you know what? The truth is not with these people. These people are just using people's ignorance making themselves rich. You know when they advertise, if you go on Facebook and you see all these adverts, oh, join us and then you become a millionaire in two days. And then luckily one of the ladies I attended one of these workshops with, she recommended a book that I read. I've shown you that book in the past. I can't remember what it's called right now, but I've shown it, you know, Fast Lane Millionaire, something like that. And the man explained it. That what these people do is they just take you through he calls it, you cannot achieve it without a process. And so what they give you is what he calls a project. So they give you the project. 
they give you the project, the project being the end result. They tell you how one of their students that they taught something became a millionaire in two days. And so they just skip the whole process and they tell you the millionaire stage. They haven't told you the steps they took to get there. I have never promised anybody who come to train with me that overnight you're going to become a millionaire. No. But I know all my students who followed my steps and they have achieved amazing results. They've got into, you know, when my, with my, with my hair braiding training and hair extensions training, what we said is we put money in your hands, that your hand is where the money is. And that's the honest truth. Because over the years with all the skills I got with hair, I am still using the knowledge and the skills that I have to feed me, my family, and carry on with my life and travel the world. It is from the, the skills that I have in my hands that I achieve that. But you see, typically, you want more and you want more. I mean, for as long as there's life, you want to add more to life. Life is about growth. But what these people do is they tell you that you are going to achieve this result within two days. And then when you finish the course and you find that it's not happening, you get disillusioned. And so that's what happened to us. But then we remembered, you know, like I said, we've been to China several times and we'd seen these things, but it didn't click then. We're still thinking there's something elsewhere. And so I remembered and I said, there's so much going on in China. And I tell you what, think about any brand that you know any brand, Louis Vuitton, Dior, Christian Dior, uh, Versace, uh, Tom Ford, whatever. Whatever these brands are, everybody is going to China to get these goods. China right now is the topmost country in the world with skills, with knowledge, with expertise, with you, you just name it, with services, with products. See how they're going around the world and creating all these things at whatever money that suits them. This is what it is. I've talked about human resource understanding or human resource or assets or intellectual capability. You know, this is what it is. For as long as you haven't got the human know-how, you may, like we all do, Western world, we go to all the schools, we learn all these things, and putting all of that knowledge into practical use becomes a problem. And that's the one edge that China has right now over everybody else. I mean, the U.S., you know how in the past it was the U.S. that had this power and everyone looked up to the U.S.? But, you know, for some years past now, I remember going to Virginia once for a training course and I saw the whole landscape looking very deserted. And I wondered what happened. And somebody told me, oh, the same thing was happening in, uh, I can't remember which state. It was, it was going on all around various US cities. Chicago, the same thing. And so what, uh, uh, Boston as well. So what happened was businesses were moving to China. Why? Because the human intellectual was so much more there at a cheaper rate. So all of them moved to China and left the rest of the world struggling with human capacity, human capability. So now anybody that's anyone in business has to find some connection with China. That's why I'm saying business opportunities, China. Why? Because Whatever you are dreaming of, whatever you are dreaming of right now, it's happening in China. And so when we then took that trip to go to China, now because, because we've invested all this money in all these various workshops, speaking, property, internet, we, we've done all of that. And we realized that there was no truth in the things these people were telling us. So we went to China. And then the truth opened up. That's why I'm so, I'm so excited and buzzing. There is nothing you are looking for in China that you will not find, business-wise. And so, you need to start thinking right now. That's why I'm sharing this knowledge with you. You need to start thinking. What are you looking for? What are your dreams? The truth is there are no scarcity out there. Now, when we 
do more information on China, which we're going to do. China has got billion, over a billion people population. We get to China, and I'm telling you, eh, practically everybody is self-sufficient. I mean, I live here in the UK, and I know how, th how tough things are. I know how tough things are. I mean, for those of... Those of my relatives in Africa, they just think that, oh yeah, they're having so much fun in the UK. No, there is no fun. Every product we're dealing with here in the UK comes from China. And I know the same applies to the US as well. So, there we are thinking we're having fun. We're not. Or rather, people are thinking we're having fun. We're not. Unemployment is huge. And I will know that my daughter, she's been looking for a job now for some time. Nothing is coming through. People are going to school and coming out with nothing to fall back on. People are desperate. And now, especially in the UK with this Brexit thing, UK living Europe, it's created a lot of tension in the system. But you get to a country like China, where people are trying their best to, to, to use their hands and use their know-how and use their intellectual capability, they are they are running ahead. They are light years ahead of the rest of the world. Now, look at how, how, how interesting this is. Human capability, a billion people with technology. Do you see what is going on? The technical, technological know-how in China is beyond what we in the West are thinking about. And I tell you, each time I come back from China, sometimes I wonder, do I really want to come back here? Because you will be so shocked. You think, oh yeah, UK is so way ahead. You'll be shocked to find out when you come back to the UK or come back to the US. You will find that the, the, the technological know-how here is so outdated compared to what you find in China. I mean, we, in one of the trains where we were, were traveling, there was this group of school children going on a school trip. School children, young kids, call them maybe about six, seven, eight. Every one of them had this biggest size of phones, every child, including iPads. And, and they were just busy looking into their phones and sending messages to each other. And they were all laughing and giggling away. And I'm thinking, and to even give my son a phone who's in secondary school, I'm still fighting him. So these kids are holding these gadgets that are beyond your imagination. We went to a city called Guangzhou. And Guangzhou is one of those... I'm not really taking my time to know how amazing Guangzhou is compared to the whole of China. But from what I've seen, it looks to me like the commercial hub of China. Because, you know, those of us in Nigeria, we have Abuja as the capital city, and then we have Lagos as the commercial hub. And then here in the UK, we have London as the capital city, as well as the commercial hub. Uh, in the US, we have Washington as the capital city, and then we have New York as the co uh, commercial hub. So uh, I, I will confirm that if Guangzhou is the commercial hub and Beijing is the capital city. But... This city, when, when we, because we did travel by both taxis and, you know, and then we took the underground trains, which in the U.S. is called subway. We were in the subway and the trains, you, you do not have access to the tracks. Not in one, any station. Okay, what you might say to me is, okay, uh, maybe in the UK, our underground system, which is mainly in London, is a cake and was there for centuries. So, so here in London, we have all underground trains, you have access to, air, to, the, to the tracks. And this is why people just go and commit suicide from time to time. They just jump, boom. Train is coming, jump through in front of the train. People get killed because they want to die. But in Gunshu, you don't see the tracks. This is going to, you don't see the tracks. I found that really amazing. And I traveled to as many stations as I could find. What was interesting again is the price of traveling underground. Shocking. They made life so easy to travel. 
Now, this is China. Remember, China doesn't speak English. And so you come with the English language and you're thinking, I will not survive. From the first time I went to China, I never used the service of an interpreter. But of course, lots of people do use them. Okay, it might be a bit uncomfortable if you don't know how to communicate. But this is a country that doesn't speak English, but they make, it, they make an effort to make life easy for you. Now, we were not thinking about this, my husband and I were thinking, in London, when you come to London to travel underground, I mean, parts of this will be tourism talk. So there's something we call the Oyster Card. And so you have to have the Oyster Card in order to travel underground. Now I'm thinking of myself as a visitor. I don't know anywhere. I don't know how you buy your Oyster Card. I don't know anything about your system. And then I walk into town, have an Oyster Card. And if you don't have Oyster Card, you cannot travel. This happened to me because I live outside London and I've, I've left London now about six years. And so one of the times I then went back to say, oh, I want to travel on the ground. And the man says, where's your Oyster card? I just got into the bus and I was ready to pay money. Where's your Oyster card? Why, why do I need Oyster card? Can I not just pay? No, you cannot travel without Oyster card. So, but in Guangzhou, this is different. As you get into the train, everything is written both in Chinese language and they try their best to also write in English language. So that as you put your money in, it's giving you instructions on how to go about it. Yeah. So now what was exciting was the amount of money you have to pay to travel underground. Here in the UK, you don't want to know how. I, I think traveling is one of the most expensive things we deal with here. But in China, local travel underground, I'm not talking about taxi now, just local travel underground. It was the cheapest thing ever. We're talking exchange rate of less than 10p for a, for a travel. Less than 2p sometimes, depending on the station you're going to. And why would that be the case? Because they care about their people. This is a country, a country with a billion people. People are traveling. Easily on the ground, so you don't have to say, Oh, because I'm not rich, I cannot travel. I mean, when we decided to take long distance trips, like we had to travel from Guangzhou to Hong Kong, and then this was with the bullet train, we traveled for about 800 yuan. But now, imagine a regular person with 800 yuan, you could travel for one whole year with that kind of money. So, this is how amazing the system is. Everywhere we pass, young people are fully employed. You know, as you approach every station, there were three or four security people. You had to take your, each bag you're carrying must go through the scanning system. And so they've manned everywhere with human beings, not machines. Those of us in the West here, every supermarket point is just machines dealing with. How, how are people going to get employed? How are people going to get money to survive? But in China, Every role is given to a human person. That's how they earn money. And I'm telling you, you will think there's a lot of people in China, so I should be worried when I go there. Let me protect my bag. No, everybody is so self-sufficient. I was telling my daughter, I said, you think you have iPhone 7, iPhone 8, and so you go into China, you want to be, oh, let me make sure my phone is safe. No. Everybody was on a phone, and I tell you the type of phones they're holding are as big as that. Technology that you have not seen. By which time, your phone looks like a toy. And so, why would you be concerned about somebody stealing your toy when they are holding bigger phones than you? Everybody is so laid back, so self-sufficient, so carried on with their life that you are the one who now needs them. Do you see how this is working? So it was such an experience for us that I just feel it's important that I share this. So you're traveling on the ground. It is extremely cheap. Of course, there's taxis uh, everywhere if you wanted to travel the posh way. And of course, you pay that kind of price to cover that because the taxis are not cheap compared to what you could do with that money. Food equally, if you want to go to restaurants to eat, they're not that cheap. But of course, we saw them eating everywhere. So I'm thinking, okay, and I'm thinking this is expensive. People were constantly eating. 
they are very relaxed very happy just carrying on with their life taking on their jobs so we need to wake up so that asking ourselves if there are opportunities for us to do business with these people why are we not doing it so now this is what i was thinking all that money i invested in all these workshops that never gave me nothing if i had saved all that money to go to china to go and take on a project and take on some skill i mean not skill take on some product to sell do you imagine how amazing that would have been because we this trip we went to there was an event going on a beauty show it's called the Guangzhou International Beauty Show or China International Beauty Show and it's held in this premises called Canton Fair I'm telling you you can just google it it's bigger than a village this place I mean within the premises they were taking like little buses to transport people from one end to the other I have little little video clips up I'm hoping we should be able to insert some of these video clips into this video for you to see what I'm talking about the number of people at this fair beauty show and when we went to some factories to chat with some of the hair distributors because we were looking at hair as the business idea they were telling us that there's another beauty there's a hair show coming up next month and it's like there's constantly shows going on and these people are constantly there if you'd seen the number of people that were at this event I have never seen that number of people in one place at one time I have never but that was happening lashes makeup we didn't see hair because clearly apparently it wasn't connected with hair but they said beauty so we thought oh yeah we're gonna see hair we didn't see hair but we didn't have any problem on that because we knew where to go get hair um machinery equipment to create creams body lotions hair cream you name it everything was going on there and so it's like where do you start from so my advice or the reason we decided to do this video to share our experience with you is start thinking what you want to do start thinking the business idea you want to take on now understand that all these people just like my experience of chasing all of them come and do this and make millions come and do that all these people are just there to take your money and get themselves rich that's what it is Think about it. If all these brands are all going to China to go and create all these products and come and sell to me and you, what stops you from going there to go and do the same thing for yourself? Now, the reason I'm sharing this is because my students keep asking me this all the time. How do I go to China and start a business? I want to go and start something. I want to add something to what I know. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So, you go to china you start dreaming the kind of ideas you have in mind but just like i said earlier if i had saved all my money and said i want to go invest in a product and brand it for myself i would have been light years ahead i would have been million miles of years ahead but all hope is not lost all hope is not lost because you can start right now you can start at any stage I've been preaching this to all my friends, to my children, to everyone I know. All you have to do is start saving your money. Start saving your money. Yes, okay, you might say, oh yeah, I threw mine away on all these workshops. I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel that bad about it because you know what? I've learned from it. You learn from your mistakes. So save your money. The process starts with you getting your visa. Put your money aside get your ticket for your plane plane uh, your plane ticket find out what airline you want to go with there's so many airlines that go to Guangzhou. it's huge this airport is huge so which airline do you want to go with get your ticket but of course this is what you should do <laughs> and was such by looking back now i say god thank you what happened because we've been to china several times we just, oh yeah, we just get the ticket and then we just get the visa in no time and we're off. 
they've changed everything so if you've been to china some years back and you don't have visa it's changed what they did was um now the price of visa has changed it's gone higher a lot lot higher then in the past you don't have to go to the visa center you just post your passport to them and then they send your visa in the post no now you have to physically go there to do fingerprints and iris uh whatever capture so we had to go through all that process but that was before that was after we bought our tickets so by the time we try to contact you know the the agents we use to get a visa and they were telling us everything's changed you have to come in and i was so angry i'm like I don't need all of this. Why should I need this? I don't need this. Hot. And then because we already bought the ticket, we felt, okay, we bought the ticket. But if we'd done the research of finding out that we needed to do the iris scan or whatever, iris uh, um, capture and then fingerprints, we would not have bothered buying that ticket. But I think that was God's way of trying to say, you must take this trip. So we bought the ticket. Then we found out. Then we went through the process. It was so stressful. But... We did it. I mean, everything in life, you have to put in some effort to achieve results. So we went, we got the visa. And so we took the trip. But of course, the, 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 the ticket we bought was quite a long winding route, which again, for me, is exciting because I like to experience new things. I mean, in the past, we've gone straight on up. The very first time I traveled to Guangzhou, I... I went through Qatar. I, I went with Qatar Airways and then I had a stopover for like 12 hours at the airport in Qatar and I was drained of energy, sitting down doing nothing. So I think the longer route again has its own pecs. Um, then I think then when Charles went, one of the times, my husband, he went through Emirates and I think it was Dubai. So it would depend on what type of airline you're going with. So this time we went through Beijing. No, first it was through Amsterdam, then Beijing, and then Guangzhou. Now, from what I was telling you earlier about Chinese people, just because the country's got so many people, you would think they're struggling. No, they provided for everything. The plane that took us from Beijing to Guangzhou was an Airbus. An air bus is like 10 rows of seats in this plane and is double-decker plane very relaxed the suitcase we carried because when I was coming from London I carried this suitcase the hand luggage you know which was meant to be like an, an overhead um, you know and they told me it was too big and it couldn't fit in and I'm thinking oh my gosh so we, in the end, we had to pay for that suitcase. But, so this suitcase, I was told it was too big, could not fit it. And why is that? Because the plane that takes you from London to Amsterdam, is this tiny little plane? Maybe you wouldn't call it really tiny because I've seen tiny. I, I mean, I had to, one time I was traveling from Chicago to Nebraska, to Lincoln. You know, those planes they take is like the one that carries cargo. That really frustrates me. You have to like bend your head to get in, and I'm not tall, so you can imagine what tall people go through. And then your luggage it has to be as tiny as that. I've had to quarrel with people all the time in the U.S. when they carry those weird planes, and whatever I, I, I say to them, I'm traveling from a long distance international flight. They don't care. So this is me. This is us now in Beijing going to Guangzhou and. Airbus A3 380, the biggest planes in the world at the moment. That's what's carrying people from one city in China to another city in China. Three hours this journey. Three hours journey. We are traveling in Airbus A380. I traveled to Nigeria of six hours journey and the plane is nothing to write home about. So it's like you begin to understand how these people treat their own people they give them all the comfort people were carrying luggage as big as that to put in the overhead cabin it's like and i'm thinking but this was me in london going to amsterdam i mean going checking in in amsterdam i was told no this is too big the suitcase is bigger than that in the overhead cabin and so it's just for you to begin to understand how these people think 
so we got to Beijing and then to Guangzhou and of course it just rolled from there really exciting journey really really exciting journey now this is my advice to you once you've decided this is what I want to do I want to give this a trial be very relaxed what I found with the Chinese people they're extremely friendly yes I'm not saying everybody you meet is gonna be you know hugging you with more arms but you ask them questions right at the airport there from all the officials they're eager to please you it's like it's like they it's like they're all writing or reading from the same hymn book because they understand the reason why you're there to do business so they don't want to frustrate you right from the airport from the immigration I mean initially you feel oh my gosh look at this long queue to go through it depends on the airport you landed when i went to guangzhou there wasn't much of a problem at the airport immigration but when we went to beijing it was a long queue yes i was saying that all the time in u.s so nothing is new for me on that and so this is you um now you're getting in the officials are so nice they are very friendly they, they don't stress you at all so you get in now this is the exciting part so we we get in remember i said that we've been several times i mean there was a time i went with my family all of us who we went and we were so excited just shopping for clothes and things so this time the plan was let's just concentrate on hair because yes we are working on our hair brand which is going to be coming soon so we're concentrating on hair this time and so we get in there and we start interacting with the people. Remember, we started with the hair, I mean, with the beauty event. And so beauty event came and went. We went to Hong Kong. We relaxed a little bit, came back. And so we hit the market now. The exciting thing about China is there's a market for everything. There is a market for everything. And they have factories for everything. So remember I said at the show we saw all these equipments that could create anything you want. Now my initial idea, you know I make creams for hair, hair, hair creams. So I'm thinking, could we go get some machinery to start creating our creams? So we went towards the machinery and we're asking questions and I tell you, oh my gosh, this is what I'm saying to you, the human resource, human knowledge, human capability the equipments are there no argument on that by the time they started explaining the process you have to buy a machine that treats the water you have to buy a machine that does this you have to buy a machine that separates the oil you have and i'm thinking huh do i have time for that because by the time i go into this process of beginning to treat water and treat this and treat that where is that electricity if nigeria was my market or uh, where do i want to station out this equipment if uk is my market do you see where i'm coming from so now boof that goes off the window but the equipment is there now you have to start thinking there's something they call economies of scale so at what stage am i going to finish understanding the, the processes of mixing these oils and mixing these creams and, and uh, uh, treating the water and treating to be able to get to that level where I have the right product for my clients. So then we go into plan B. And so they have all these things, they call it OEM and they can manufacture anything you want for you. They can brand anything you want for you. This is what I was saying to you, all the brands. All the brands you hear about, they all get their products from there, from China. So this is where your money comes in. If you have been saving your money and you say, I have a big project in my mind, what I want to do, there is no scarcity. Look for the money. Start working hard. This is where, I, like I, I say to my daughter, we have our two hands. Look at how all these years we've been putting together, putting training, putting skills put in services using my hand to achieve all of this now all i need to do is save my money go to china create my brand get this stuff in 
here in the UK, I say to people all the time, like when we go to Nigeria, and everyone's like, it, it, is it men in UK? It's UK one I want. Hello? We don't manufacture anything in UK. Very rarely. Very, very rarely. Everything comes from China to UK. This is what happens. When you get to China, you tell them your market. You could say to them, my market is UK. My market is Nigeria. My market is Ghana. My market is US. Depending on your market, they know what the laws are about each market. That's how curious they are. That's how intelligent they are. They know what your market requires. They know what the rules are. They know what the laws are. So they will make your product specific for your market. You see how it works? And all you have to do is pay the money they're asking for. So again, it changes in the sense of what quality of product are you looking for? This is where you hear people go, oh, baby, it's only made in China. No. You could get to China and you say to them, I want the lowest quality. They will make it for you. And you pay the lowest price. You could say to them, I want the highest quality. They will pay, they will prepare that product for you to meet your money. The money you put in is what they will give to you. And what I found out with them is they are genuine. I mean, I live here in the UK and I tell you every company want to, want to outsmart you, want to just grab your money and not give you value. I have seen that time and time and time over living here. But in China, they don't play smart with you. They tell you as it is. This is the lowest quality. This is how much you pay for it. This is the highest quality. This is, they just tell you as it is. It's up to you to say, no, I want this one. Oh, no, I'd rather have this one. So nobody's conning you. Nobody's outsmarting you. So think, think, think what you want to do. Come out of this scarcity mode. Come out of this lack. I don't know what to do. There's, there's, there's some genius in all of us. Every one of us, we have something in us. So your thing could be, because what I found when, when my husband and I got there, all he was curious about was cars. He was just looking at all the cars. He loves cars. He's always been a car person. And he was noticing every car brand he saw. For me, I was busy looking at the hairs. I was looking at the makeup I was looking at. So it's what, what excites you that you can invest in. And this is why I didn't need to take up all these crazy workshops and paying these crazy monies to, to be able to grow my life. Invest your money. Save it. And start thinking, what do I love doing? I said to my daughter, she's into beauty as well, said, let's wake up from this. I'm looking for a job mode and focus on what your beauty skills are. Because like the, the show we went for, I'm telling you, we had, I was taking videos of people putting lashes on, people, you know, massaging people, or else everywhere. So it's like, whatever takes your fancy, there is a market. For, we saw markets for shoes. We saw the fashion market was like, I was, I was holding myself back from entering the market. Why? Because I knew I didn't come for fashion. And I know how much I love fashion. If I'd walked in, I want to buy something. And I was very curious or, or you know, I was a bit concerned about weight. Knowing that the minute I get into Amsterdam, coming to London, I'm going to have issues with whether you're carrying, whether you're not carrying. So I decided, no, I don't want to get into that market. But this market for fashion, there's market for shoes, there's market for handbags, there's market for, you name it, for, for makeup, for foundation, for lipstick, for eyelashes. There's market for everything. So, like I've said, all you have to do is invest your money or rather save your money, grow it. Because you're not going to walk into, I was just speaking with my sister not too long ago, and she was like, oh, but I hear that in China, they're asking for volumes. Yes, because these people will have factories, factories that could produce, turn around. One of, one, one of the machines we saw, the man was saying to us that it was a lipstick making factory or machine. And he was saying they could make like 50 pieces or 50,000 pieces, something like that, in a minute. 
So if they got capacity to make that much, do you think they're gonna say to you, oh, you can actually order 50? No. Because for them it's economies of scale. What's the point by making these things and selling to you at such cheap price and then we start selling it as if we're retailing it? They don't do retail, they do wholesale. But of course, if you're going to the markets, which is where uh, you know I'm talking about, you could get regular things. But if you now decide, you know what, I want to go bigger and bigger, you could actually be hitting, you could actually be hitting the factories and getting these things at ridiculously cheap prices. So these are the kind of things we're talking about. This is the kind of thing I want you to start thinking about and start taking away that poverty mindset, taking away that scarcity mindset. Now, it could come back to where I get involved in the sense of start using your hands to create the money you want. So take on basic skills, take on knowledge in the sense of learn how to work with hair. And once you've got clients coming in and you're doing their hair, you're saving your money slowly. And then you have a bigger dream. Maybe you want to create your own hair brand. Maybe you want to create hair accessories. I'll have students say, I want to create like sleeping uh, bonnets. I want to create like, uh, you know, uh, um, what's this one? Uh, the wig caps. I want to create uh, um, hair pins or hair bows. And I put my brand on it. There's so much you can do with hair. So if you've got the skill, this is where I always say to people, for us in particular, the stylists, people behind the scene working with the clients, our role in life is not just standing behind our clients for life. There's so much more out there. So you hear people go, oh yeah, the Koreans, especially in the US and then the, you know, the Indians in the UK, they take over all the hair business. No, if you got your money, you go to China, they will create a brand for you. That's how simple as it is. So I'm not, I'm not going to keep pushing this too much. So the long and short about this is the people are extremely advanced with their knowledge in every area of business. Extremely advanced. They are light years ahead. We are just trailing behind them. Practically like crawling. I don't even know when we will start walking behind them. We're crawling right now. They are ahead. They got the equipment. They got the manpower. They got the knowledge. They put it all together. Everywhere we're going, the minute you say something, you go, show me a sample. The minute you show them a sample, they know what it is. Because they made it. So, the long and short, you know, long and short of all this long talk is, we have experienced it. We know it is there. We are working on ours. We've been there several times. Now, this is a question people have asked me over and over and over. Remember, I'm doing a course in tourism, which is one of my next big thing. We are happy to handhold you to China and back. We are happy to take you to whatever market you think this is what you are looking for. We are happy to research whatever type of accommodation you are looking for. And we will guide you to China to create that branded product you want to set you up for life so that's the reason we felt there's need for because when we know something we're just one of those people that don't hide what we know and I thank God because whenever I share what he's putting me he blesses me more I get people who look at me and most times they think, where does she get this energy and this? And she just keeps going on and on and on. Um, this is me. Let no one look at me and think, oh. It, it, it hasn't been the easiest journey, but I know what, you know what? God is on my side. He guides me. He leads me. And I want him to lead you too. I want you to open yourself to God to lead you, to walk through you. Because once you allow God to take control, he opens the way for you. I am so excited that all this is happening. But for me, my role is to share my experience with you. And I've done that. So follow us on Instagram. We have so many at the moment. There's Joy Fido where 
I give my personal understanding about things. And then there's world of braiding on Instagram. We talk about the hair knowledge and the hair skills and the hair, hair information. And then our brand and hair is coming where it's going to be designer hairs with a Z. Designer hairs. Then, of course, on Facebook, we are there as well. Joy Fido International on Facebook. There's Joy Fido where I just throw out me again, my personal things. And then we have um, designer hairs on Facebook as well. We have African Queen, which is the fashion line or African couture fashion again fashion so it's like we are quite happy to share whatever we know in various sectors so contact us email us with any question you have but with time we're going to open up where we'll have a question and answer live question and answer where you can chat with us and we'll be answering you as they happen but for now email us we have um, info at worldbreading.com. We have joyfido at googlemail.com. Just anyone will do. And we are more than happy to chat with you. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And God bless you abundantly.